Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. To the casual showbiz buff, Buddy Rogers has always been a big mystery. During the peak of his popularity in the late 1920s and early 1930s, he was publicised as America's boyfriend. He's also better known now less for his career than because of the woman he married. Charles Buddy Rogers will be remembered primarily because he succeeded Douglas Fairbanks as husband to Mary Pickford. But he had an impressive career in his own right. Why Buddy Rogers wasn't just Mary Pickford's last husband? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks, after a long affair, cause a huge scandal by divorcing their spouses and getting married and then having the temerity to split up after 16 years. Fairbanks, at least then, went on to marry an aristocrat, Lady Sylvia Ashley. But Pickford, the most powerful woman in Hollywood and one of the most powerful women in the country, went on to marry some guy named Buddy. Rogers was a handsome actor and musician. While some critics speculated that he was after Pickford's fame and fortune, his affection for her was widely acknowledged. This Buddy Rogers should not be confused with the professional wrestler of the same name, the one who was known as the original Nature Boy. Not that the performer Buddy Rogers, a vocalist, musician, big band leader and actor, had anything to complain about. In fact, the wrestler was probably jealous that he wasn't the other Buddy Rogers, who among other things got to marry gorgeous starlet Mary Pickford. Talent was also something that the non-wrestling Rogers was said to have had a great deal of. He was known to be the only big band leader able to play every instrument in the orchestra. Rogers began his performing career as a musician, but for a while managed to keep both an acting and a music career going strong and on parallel tracks. Charles Buddy Rogers was a popular enough star, but nothing on the scale of Pickford, who practically owned Hollywood in the teens and twenties, and whom, though no longer a star by 1937, still ran a movie studio, United Artists. He was an actor and band leader and silent screen star best known for the film Wings. Rogers earned the Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award from the Motion Picture Academy in 1985 for his efforts in fundraising and philanthropy in the film industry. He was one of the last silent screen matinee idols and appeared at many ceremonies which honoured the significance of the silent era in the motion picture industry. Married to the silent film star Mary Pickford, he devoted much of his life in supporting her philanthropic causes and her memory in the film industry. Premiering Halloween 1927, My Best Girl was the legendary Mary Pickford's final silent and her final film with her famous long golden curls. With a budget of $483,103, it made $1,027,757 in the US during its first theatrical run. Another really special thing about this film is that she co-stars with her future third and final husband, Charles Buddy Rogers. Real life and art imitate one another most powerfully, as the film captures two real people falling in love, just as their characters do. Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks were the silent era king and queen of Hollywood, but their careers were on the wane by the early 30s. He turned to another woman, she to alcohol. They separated and in 1936 divorced, a decision they both apparently very much regretted. A year later, though, Pickford married Buddy Rogers, 12 years her junior, in a ceremony as quiet as the MacDonald Raymonds had been grand. They seemed to have a happy marriage and he was always very attentive to her during her ever-increasing post-career isolation and deepening alcoholism. They were married for 41 years. Rogers reported that Clark Gable once told Mary Pickford when we got married that it wouldn't last six months, because he was 11 years younger than her. Born in 1904, Charles Buddy Rogers was raised by an active, wholesome family in Alath, Kansas. He grew up the son of the newspaper publisher. He was a paper boy delivering the Olath Mirror and the Kansas City Star. His father later became a judge. He was boyishly good-looking and musically talented, 
At the University of Kansas, he played several instruments and conducted a jazz band. His recording career began with Victor and continued with Vocalion, including sides such as Sweeping the Clouds Away and My Future Just Passed. He loved music and played the trumpet, trombone, drums, piano, accordion and many reed instruments in the campus's dance bands. He owned a raccoon coat, drove a Model T Ford, lived in a fraternity house and maintained two to three girlfriends. Tall, slim and handsome, Rogers was popular on his college campus. In his junior year at college, his father encouraged his good-looking son to send his photographs to the Paramount Pictures casting directors. A casting director went to Lawrence, Kansas to give Rogers a screen test. He passed and was sent to Astoria, New York to appear in bit parts. He was chosen for a part in Beau Geste with Ronald Coleman and shipped off to Hollywood. On his arrival, he discovered that he had lost the part to another actor. He made his first film in 1925, the same year his new band got its debut booking at New York's Pennsylvania Hotel. This group had Gene Krupa in the drum seat and was billed at one point as the newest thing in swing. Female vocalists included one Marvel Maxwell, who later became much better known as Marilyn Maxwell. As for male vocals, Rogers took care of the majority. Buddy Rogers and his California Cavaliers was one of the main names he toured under, and he had quite a personalised band theme song in My Buddy. Although other big bands became much better known, Rogers' activities, including recordings and relentless touring, are one of the reasons the popularity of this style of dance band music grew. He starred in a couple of films before landing his major role, the film, an epic for its time, featured sequences of dogfights and collisions shot from the air. The role positioned Rogers to get the part of Joe Grant in a light romantic comedy, My Best Girl, where he met Mary Pickford. In the love scenes, it was plain to everyone that the two had chemistry. His romance with Pickford began here. The couple was finally wed in 1938 and stayed together until Pickford's death in 1979. Rogers remained active nearly two decades after this, winding up with some 52 movie and television credits as an actor. He was also active as a producer beginning in the 40s and had an interesting collaborative relationship with actress Nancy Carroll, beginning as her co-star and continuing as her producer. Rogers served in the military during World War II and was back in action as a band leader off and on after the conflict ended. His good looks and charm earned Rogers the nickname America's Boyfriend. People loved him in romantic comedies, but his acting career faltered when he was cast in second-rate films. He turned back to music. He was a true showman, and though not the most talented musician, he entertained with a broad smile and engaging personality. In 1927, a new spotlight hit Rogers' acting career when he appeared as part of the cast of Wings, the first film to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. He was glad Hollywood special effects departments weren't so sophisticated when he starred in Wings in 1927, otherwise he would have missed one of the greatest pleasures of his life flying. He also would have missed one of the greatest terrors of his life learning to fly. Wings is a story about aviation in World War I that required large amounts of flying footage. But we didn't have the ability to make it look as though we were flying when we weren't, like they do these days, so we had to be in the air for every shot, Rogers recalled. A little weak in the knees but determined to see the assignment through, he was sent to an airfield where they gave me a second lieutenant with orders to teach me how to fly. It wasn't going to be easy, I had been up in an airplane once for five minutes. Fear gradually gave way to euphoria, he kept flying long after filming ended. He accumulated so many hours of flying time that the day after World War II began, he was commissioned as a pilot. I was a test pilot, he said. I hate to admit it, but I was having more fun doing that than I had acting. But what thrilled me the most was that young pilots would come up to me and say they had joined the Air Corps because as little boys they saw wings. I heard that thousands of times. It's one of the things I'm most proud of. He learned to fly from expert Hoyt Vandenberg, who would later become a four-star general during World War II. In 1927, Wings was the first film to receive the Best Picture Oscar and continued the most famous and enduring of all silent films. 
Rogers went on to make 60 films. I can't even remember some of them, he said. At first we were making five movies a year. That was our life. We were the Paramount family and we loved it. It was so different than today. The camaraderie extended beyond the confines of the studio. If Paramount was family, then the people at MGM, Warners and Fox were cousins. We all knew each other, he recalled. We got together once a month for a white tie dinner and film scene dance. We were friends. It wasn't dog eat dog, where everyone is looking out only for himself. Rogers gave up his career in music because of his wife, actress Mary Pickford, wanted him at home with her. He spent his time hosting the many parties the couple threw at the Pickfair mansion. When Pickford grew ill and became a recluse, Rogers became her primary caretaker. After her death, he represented his wife at the many tributes and celebrations of the silent screen eras around the world. Soon he became more successful in his profession within a limited period of time, where he influenced people on the basis of his career and earned a lot of fame. After a while, his career completed a full circle as he gained more importance. Charles Edward Buddy Rogers went famous for his performance in his own country, US, as well as in other countries. In the 1930s, he jumped to the front pages of fan magazines when he was declared America's boyfriend. At one point, he was getting 30,000 fan letters a week. My hair was black and my teeth were white. Now it's vice versa, Rogers said. It was one of those schemes cooked up by publicity people. One morning I got up and discovered I was the darling of the debutantes. I was America's boyfriend. I liked it? No, I loved it. Pickford had always pictured herself becoming a mother. She had wanted to adopt a child with Fairbanks, in fact, but the marriage ended with no children. Six years after she and Buddy were married, Pickford, aged 51, realised that she was running out of time. The couple visited an orphanage where a six-year-old boy dressed impeccably in a suit enchanted them. After a day spent entertaining the boy, Pickford was enamoured with him. She and Rogers officially adopted Ronald Ronnie Charles Rogers in 1943. Less than a year after Ronnie joined the family, Pickford was back at the orphanage, marvelling over babies. She was taken with a dark-haired girl with a bright countenance. More than I ever wanted anything in my life, I wanted that baby, Pickford would say. The impatient mother could hardly wait the few weeks it took to process the adoption papers. When the adoption was approved, she raced to pick up the child, Roxanne, and drove home in a frenzy. She had not even told Buddy, who was serving as a lieutenant in the Air Force, about the infant's arrival. In her excitement, she had also failed to acquire all of the necessities for a baby's comfort, revealing her shortcomings as a parent. The children's life in a Hollywood mansion was not normal. It was so big, Ronnie would remember. You needed a road map to find the bathroom. I was in awe, but they told me I was going to be living there. Pickford and Rogers treated the children like theatrical props, sending them to boarding schools and posing them in family photographs when they were home on visits. Pickford became critical of their physical imperfections, including Ronnie's small stature and Roxanne's crooked teeth. Both children would later remark that their mother was too self-interested to provide genuine maternal love. Buddy devoted more of his time to television in the 50s, as well as handling his wife's business investments. In the following decade, he also had Pickford's failing health to deal with. Following her death, he relocated to the Palm Springs area, and became a real estate dealer. Until her death in 1979, he would be better known as her husband than as a star in his own right. I was never jealous, he said. I was so lucky that I called myself Mr. Lucky. After the war, he made a scattered few additional appearances in film and TV, but mostly just rattled around Pickfair for the next several decades. He passed away in 1999. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Buddy Rogers? He deserves to be remembered for his life and career.